Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, which is the final video on my how to create an animated Batman scene series, I want to show you how to lip sync using drivers and to set up sliders in the viewport to quickly create keyframes and change between mouths. I think the setup works great if you've got a character that you're going to be lip syncing a lot. Uh, it is a bit of a setup, so I'm not sure I would use it if I was doing one off. I think the previous video showed you how to do that with opacity sliders would work just as well. But I think this is a more enjoyable approach to lip syncing because it's so visual and again in the viewport. So I'll get that set up and we'll be using drivers to create those. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and watch the other videos in the series. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and let's get started. So here I am in the scene that I ended the last video with. And the first thing I want to do is I want to click on the mouth layer. And I want to delete all of these keyframes except for the first one. So now you can see we have the closed mouth showing. Now I'm going to scroll in and what we're going to do is have sliders to go back and forth to turn these on and off. So currently I have the closed mouth here. I want to click G to grab it while in object mode and move that over just a little to get it out of frame. Then I'm going to go to the outliner and I'm going to right click on scene and add new collection. And I want to change that collection name to lip sync. I want to drag the mouth chart into it. Then I want to click this icon here to make it unselectable. If you don't have that icon available, click at the top right where you can turn on filters and turn that on right there. So now it's unselectable. I can't select it in the viewport. The next thing I want to do while in object mode, I want to hit Control A and go down to grease pencil, add blank. So I'm going to double click on that name in the outliner. I want to change it to one closed mouth button. Now I want to go to draw mode and I'm going to go down to the materials menu and we currently have a black outline. I'm going to double click on that and change the name to button outline. Then I'm going to go down here at the base color and I'm going to change that to a brighter color, say that hot pink. Now I'm going to go to the box draw tool and I'm going to draw a box around that mouth. Go ahead and enter to finalize it. Now I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to click on that box and I'm going to click in on my keyboard or you can click the icon next to the viewport right here to open that menu I just opened. This shows you our transform information. So currently that shows 0, 0, 0, 0 all the way down because the origin is at 0 but not the drawing. So I'm going to go to object set origin origin to geometry and you can see that orange little dot jumped there and now our locations are where the actual box is. This is important because of what I'm about to do next. So I'm going to go to the constraint option down here. If you click on that, I'm going to click add object constraint and I'll go to limit location. Now what's going to happen is I want this box to only move left and right a certain amount. So currently it's on and I want to have an option to turn it off. And every time I move it back and forth, it creates a keyframe either to turn a mouth on or turn a mouth off. So I'll click on minimum X because that's the axis it's moving in, left to right is X. I want to click in here in the transform X location, I'll hit copy. Then I'll click in here and hit paste, control V. Now I want to click this mouth, hit G on the keyboard, X to constrain it and drag it over away from the mouth. Now you see it turned yellow because we have auto keyframing on. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to turn off auto keyframing and I'm going to select that keyframe and drag it over to one. Okay, so I want it to be available throughout the timeline. So I want it on one. So to do that, you should probably put it on one before you draw the drawing, but you can quickly fix that by doing what I just did. So now I'm going to click on the box again, hit G and then X and bring it over. And now you see it's no longer yellow. I'm going to click on the X and hit Control C to copy that. Then I'll click the checkbox next to maximum X, hit Control V to put that in there and hit enter. So now you can see it changed where it needs to be. So if I hit G and grab this, it'll only move left and right that amount. But you can see it's still moving up and down. I'm going to undo that. Now in this menu I opened, I want to hit the lock icons next to everything except the X location. So now it can't be moved 
in Y or Z. It can't be rotated. It can't be scaled. It can only move in X and only in the areas we've limited it to. So now if I hit G, you can see that it's only going to go that far. Now if you look at the numbers, if I keep pulling past this, the number in X keeps going up. That is kind of a limitation, but so when you grab it, just you know, kind of stop when it stops. So to make this easier to use this, I'm going to click on this drop down up here, which is viewport gizmos, and I'm going to turn on the move object gizmo. So now you see we have that, so now it's easier for me to grab. I don't have to hit G every time I want to get it. So the next thing I want to do is I want to pull this over to where it stops. And I'm going to hit Control D to make a duplicate. And as soon as I hit Control D, I'm just going to click in the viewport. So it'll create a duplicate and leave it exactly where it is now. So I'm going to double click on that name and change it to Close Mouth Off. And I'm going to make it unselectable and I'm going to hide it. So now the mouth visibility is going to be controlled based on the opacity of that layer. Just like last time, but we're putting in a control for that. So if I click on the mouth and then come down to the Grease Pencil Properties, we have Closed Mouth. I'm going to right click on that and hit Delete Keyframe. And the keyframe is from the last time. So I'm going to right click on it again and set Add Driver. And I want to show you why I did the Delete the Keyframe. So if I go back and the keyframe's there, I right click and you see I don't have an Add Driver option anymore. So in order to get that Add Driver option, I need to delete that keyframe. So I'm going to delete keyframe, right click again, hit Add Driver. And a menu will come up. You can just mouse off that and it will disappear. So what I want to do is hover over the edge of the timeline, right click and hit Horizontal Split, and then drag up. And that creates a new viewport panel. So I'm going to click on the left drop down and I want to change the viewport option to Drivers. And now with the mouth layer selected, you can see I now have this Opacity 1 Closed Mouth Driver. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, and I'll go to Animation. I want to make sure my keyframe default interpolation mode is set to constant. And again, and if you watched the last video, you know this is typically set to Bezier. And what Bezier does is it slowly fades between one keyframe and the next. And I don't want that. I want it to be the same until the next keyframe. So I want it to be constant until the next keyframe. And then when my mouth changes, in this case it will disappear, I want it to be an instant disappear, not a gradual disappear. So mine's currently set to constant. And I'm going to X out of that. So now if I click on that, you can see I have this menu over here. And if you don't see that, you can just hit in on your keyboard to open it. There's also a little arrow over here that you can click on. So I want to change the interpolation here too to constant. And then I want to go to Drivers. And under Driver, we have the type of driver this will be. So I'm going to click on that. And it's currently set to Transform Channel. I'm going to click on that and change it to Distance. Now, it wants to know what objects are going to control this driver. So I'm going to click in the box. And it's going to give me a pop-up menu. And I'm going to choose Closed Mouth Button as my Object 1. For my Object 2, I'm going to click on that and change Closed Mouth Off. So our current variable is opacity. And this expression is variable, which is opacity. And it's, the variable is based on what you chose for your add driver option. So that is our opacity plus 1. And I don't want that. So I'm going to click in there and delete plus 1. So it's now just opacity. And you see our mouth disappeared because the opacity is now 0 because it is the variable. So if I want to click on here and drag this over. You can see the mouth comes back, but only partially, because the opacity is 0.645. So it's not making it all the way to 1. So to fix that, I'm going to have var, the multiply symbol, and I'm going to type in 1.25. So you see it changed to 0.806, so it's still not enough. So I'm going to multiply that by 2. See, now it changed to 1, and the mouth's fully black. So now if I go to Viewport and drag this, you can see it's disappearing like I want it to. So now I need to create this setup for all the other nine mouths. In order to do that, I'm going to click on the closed mouth, and I'm going to make it selectable and turn it on. Then I'm going to hit Shift-D to create a duplicate, and Z to constrain the Z-axis. And now I've got that one. And I'll go ahead and create eight more of these, the same method, Shift-D, Z to constrain the Z-axis, and bring it down. So I'll speed that up and I'll be right back. So 
So now that I've created all of these, I want to change their names to match the mouth chart. So I'm going to click on this one, change it to two, close teeth, off. And I'll go down the line and change each one of these to match the mouth chart. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. I named them first because I'm about to duplicate those and bring those over to create the on button. And that way I've already named them, so I only need to change the name a little bit instead of retyping all the names. So I'll left click and drag those, hit Shift D to create duplicates, X to constrain the X axis, and we'll drag those over to match the location of the one at the top. Okay, see now I can double click and I just need to change off to button. And now I'm going to select close teeth off, deselect it, and hide it. I'm going to go ahead and do the top one. I don't need it available anymore either. So I'm going to click on this one, double click, change it off to button. Then I'll left click the other one and hide it. So I'm going to go through and make those name changes and hide those boxes and then I'll be back. And I can copy the word button and then when I double click in the next one I can just paste that. So it creates a little less work. Now somehow my other names didn't get off added to those, so I'm going to double click on one, add off, then I'll copy the word off with control C, and I can double click on the o, those and add it. Okay, that's done. Now you can see that we've got this collection set up with all of our information, I can just hide that. So now if I select on each one of these, you can see that I still have the constraint added and all the information is locked except for that. So now I'll click on mouth and click on grease pencil properties, go down to the layers, and I'll click on closed teeth. And you can see closed mouth is purple because there's a driver on it. Closed teeth is green, it still has a keyframe on it. So I'm gonna right click on it, hit clear keyframe, right click again, hit add driver. Now you can see we have this two closed teeth driver. I'm gonna click on it and I wanna change it from transform to distance and I want to change the object one to close teeth button and object two to two close teeth off. So you can see the mouth change, so we've set that up. And then finally, we need to change this variable to variable times two. So now it's set up just like the other one, and you can see that our mouth is available. So I'm going to click on open mouth three, and I'm going to right click on the opacity. I'm going to hit clear keyframes. I'm going to right click again, hit add driver. Now you can see we have the open mouth here. So I'm going to click on three, change the variable to distance, change object one to three open mouth button and object two to three open mouth off. Change the variable to variable times two now that mouth is available. So I'm going to do that process for the rest of these mouths and then I'll be right back and everything will be set up and ready for keyframing. Now you see we have all these mouths visible. So with auto keyframing on, I want to click on the second mouth and I'll pull that over till it disappears and we'll do this for every one of them. So not only does it create a keyframe for each of our mouths as a starting point, it also makes them all disappear and now we're on just the closed mouth. Okay, I've got the audio from last time, so let's play that so I can see where it's at. And we'll go ahead and close this menu over here. And we'll scrub over to the first sound. So I'm going to grab the closed mouth and we'll drag it over. You see it disappears. And we'll drag it back because I want to set a keyframe for that. And I'll we'll drag it back over. So if I scrub backwards, you can see it's not on there. So I'm going to turn it back on. Now if I scrub back, it disappears at that frame. So the first sound is a S sound. So I'm going to drag three over. Now if I go back, you can see the mouse change. And 
Now there's a gap. So I'm going to grab that keyframe and I'll slide it over a little bit. Now you see there isn't a gap now. And there's a T sound. So I'm going to pull that over to turn it off. I'm going to click on 9 and pull it over. I'm going to click on 8 and pull it over. There's an A sound, so I'm going to pull this back over and pull 3 over. There's an N, so I'm going to pull this off to turn it off. And I'll find the N sound, which is... So I don't really see that option, so I'm going to use 7 and pull that over to turn it on. I'm going to pull that off and put on a T sound. I'm probably really off on these, but I want to play this, see what it looks like. It ain't easy. So I'm going to turn that off and we'll go back to the E sound, which is three. I'm going to turn that off and find a Z sound. I know we don't have a Z, so I'm going to find nine. I'm going to turn that off and go back to the E sound. I'm going to play this. It ain't easy. I'm going to turn that off and turn close mouth on. I'm going to turn that off and use a B sound, which is a closed mouth. So I'm going to try eight. I'm going to turn that off and use E again. And I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn on 7. I'm going to turn that off and go with a C. So I'm going to turn that off and turn on TH. I'm going to turn that off and turn on E. I'm going to play this. It ain't easy being cheesy. And I'm going to turn that off and turn on closed mouth. It ain't easy being cheesy. I think you can smooth this out quite a bit, but I just wanted to provide an example of how you can set this up in the viewport so you can easily visually lip sync a character by using this method. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and watch the other videos in this series, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. It ain't easy being cheesy.